there was a little glitch in the, in the if you look at your bulletins, the title of the message isn't that, it's, it's not pride that it go. And uh, something told me to go back there and get a, a bulletin and I saw it and I said, oh, Brother Jerry, you made a mistake. <laughs> but it's okay though, but it's okay. But the title of the message this morning is, it's my way or the highway. And, and I, <laughs> it's my way or the highway. Amen. So I want you guys to read the, the title of the, in front of the bulletin and what it says. It says, in the wilderness, it says, prepare, it says, get ready for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And that's the way we're supposed to be doing, people. We're supposed to be preparing the way for the Lord. Amen? Because, see, from time to time, people want to have it their way. And I told you before, this is not Burger King ministry. <laughs> you can't have it your way in this place. We're going to have to have it God's way. Amen. Amen? So it's my way or the highway. So what does it really mean? It means this, look, it's either you take it or you leave it. Either you take it or you leave it. Which indicates to the listener, which are you guys, that they must totally accept the giver's decision or suffer negative consequences. So see, you can't have it your way all the time, but all the time you want it your way. But it doesn't work that way when you say yes to God. Oh. Amen? Because when you said yes to God, you were saying yes to God in every way, mm -hmm. according to His ways. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So I hope this morning, you get out of the way Amen. and let Him get and steer you the right way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, get out of the way. Get out of the way. <laughs> Amen? And I'm not talking about all the ways that are in here. Okay? Amen? But this morning, I do want to share a couple of things and a couple of verses and scriptures. And the Lord really took me on a spiritual journey with this teaching. I really sat there and really had to listen to what, which way he was de directing me into. Because it's so important, people, that we stick to his way. Because from time to time to time, the enemy would love to steer you in the wrong direction. And he does it with so many things. Yeah. You know, he, he's a disguiser. He's yeah. a scammer. He's a schemer. He does anything and everything to get you out of God's way and put you into his way. Amen? So again, I'll tell you the, the title of the message. It's my way or the highway. Amen? So God's ways are right. God's ways are just. God's ways are true. And God's ways are higher than man's ways. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? But see, but man's ways are perverse before God. Yes. And sometimes we fall short, people. And we allow perversion to come into our lives. We allow defilement to defile ourselves because we're listening to the wrong voice. And we're headed in a different direction. And God is trying to pull you back and pull you back, but you're not paying attention because you're too busy walking in darkness. And God is trying to pull you back into what? Into the light that you may not stumble in His ways. Amen? Amen. So I hope this morning this message does a little checkup, not only from the neck up, <laughs> but also that it will pierce your heart, yes. but also that it will circumcise your heart and pull back the flesh so that you may know and understand what is God trying to tell us this morning. Amen. 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 See, because it, it sometimes it's hard to do it God's way. Because you know why? Because our flesh gets in the way. No, our flesh gets in the way. We want to do it like Frank Sinatra says, and I did it my way. Really, so how far did you get? Amen? How far did you get by doing it my way? Because it's not about you anymore, people. It's about the God that we serve. 
And we're going to have to be so careful and so attentive to his word. And I've been sharing this with all of you guys. Look, Jesus is coming back. No, Jesus is coming back for his people. He's not coming back for the people. He's coming back for his people. Those people who are called by his name. And if we're not ready and prepared to follow in his ways, then he's going to send you into another way. And that's going to be your choice. Amen? Amen? So let's look at the word of God concerning the right way. Turn over to the book of Hosea. Amen. Amen. Hosea chapter 14. In the book of Hosea chapter 14. I mean, I tell you what, uh, I couldn't, I had to close the book because he was giving me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he gives you so much. How am I going to do this in one hour, Lord? Well, just, I'm going to give you enough so in order for them to chew on it. Amen? In the book of Hosea 14, 9, it says this, Lord. Who is wise? No, who is wise? He's questioning each and every member that's in this place here this morning. <coughs> he says, who is wise? Then let him understand these things. And who is prudent? Or who is wise and careful? Shouldn't you be careful about the things that you're doing? Yes. Shouldn't you be careful about the way you act and conduct yourself? Yes. Is this God's ways? Mm. Amen? Yes. He says, let him, let them know. He says, for the ways of the Lord are right. Yes. Plain and simple. It doesn't take much people to understand God's ways. That's right. But for the ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but transgressors will stumble in them. Amen? Amen. So if you want to do it your way, go ahead. God's not going to stop you. God's not going to stop you from going back into your iniquity. God's not going to stop you from going back and doing the things that you were doing yesterday. Amen? Because we're going to have to do it God's way, people. You know why? Because one day we're all going to face the Lord face to face. Right. One day he's going to question us. One day he's going to open up the book of remembrance. And one day he's going to say, why didn't you follow my ways? Didn't I leave you enough information in this book in order for you not to stumble in your ways? Didn't I turn on the light for you? Didn't I tell you, walk in my ways? Come on. Always? Come on, yes. But you chose not to. Look, we see through the Old Testament how many times God set up Israel to follow His ways. And as soon as they got blessed, they forgot about the blessings of God. They got entangled with the people they were surrounded by. The Canaanites, the Parasites, and everything that was out there. They were entertaining themselves. Amen. Worshipping false gods. And all of a sudden they started going into another way. And God saw it. And then God punished them. And then they repented. Then they came back to do it God's way again. And after the blessing wore off, they went back again. Over and over and over. But see, we know better now. We know better now. But nobody in you in here has an excuse or a reason to walk the other way anymore. Because see, tomorrow's not promised to nobody. Because we don't know from day to day what's going to happen to us. Amen? So let me read this verse again to all of you, okay? Because God's ways are right. Do you believe that? <coughs> Who is wise? Do you have any wisdom in your heart? Do you have any wisdom in your mind? Do you have any wisdom in your life to do it God's way? Amen? He says, who is wise? Let him understand these things. Come on, people. I'm going to say it like this. We're not stupid Christians. We're not stupid. We're not, we're not ignorant of the word. Amen? 
Let him understand these things and who is prudent. Let him know them. Come on. For the ways of the Lord are right. You can't get any more right than God's ways. Amen. I don't care who comes and tries to tell you or tries to deceive you with other words. Amen? Amen. The righteous walk in them, but transgressors will stumble in them. Mm. Amen? Amen? Now let's look at uh, God's ways about being just. Turn over to the book of Daniel. I'm going to give you some scripture today. Amen? Amen. Because it's so important, people, for us to know and understand what is God trying to show us here this morning about doing it His way. Amen? Amen. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, starting in verse 28. And this is what happens when you start doing it God's way and God is just. Amen? Daniel 4, chapter 28 says this, look, and all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power? And for the honor of my majesty. You know what that is, people? That's pride. Pride to the match, people. Because it's all about me, myself, and I. And look at everything that I have done. Look at everything I have built. Look at everything that I have created. It's all by my power, he said. But look at how quick God will answer. He says, while the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. He says, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it says, no, to you, it's only him. It is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. Wow. Because it's about me, myself, and I. Look, I don't take glory in anything in this church because of what God has done through me. It's not that I did all this and I did all that, that I built this church and this building, that I... No, it's about God led me His way. He led us into this place. We, 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 we waited on God when we waited on God. And guess what, people? We're still going to continue to wait on God. Because if I wanted to, I could have this building next door. But I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to wait on God. Like I told you before, we will go to a second service before we go into another building. It's not about the building, people. It's about building the people. Not the building. Get it to your mind. Get it to your hearts. Well, Pastor Bob, there's no more room. We'll, we'll make room. That's right. It's not about your way, okay? God's way. It's about God's way. That's right, amen. amen. But Nebuchadnezzar, it says, to you, it has been spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And this is the angel of God speaking to him. It says, and they shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you know on, people. Yeah. Until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of man yeah. and gives it to whomever he chooses. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <coughs> that very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. See, it doesn't take much for God, people, to move. Yeah. It does. See, we serve a just God. And we serve a God that can deal with each and every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. So don't go and try to test God <coughs> with your ways. Well, Lord, you just don't know. You know that I'm carnal. You know that I'm flesh. You know you created me and you gave me certain desires. And Lord, 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 
You you know all these. You know that I'm weak. You know that when I look at Maria or Sister John, you know that I get all turned on by Lord. You know that I need my little drink because, and you know I I need my little snort here and here. And you know that I love to roll those joints. Lord, Lord, no, you can't have it your way no more. Remember when you said, Lord, come into my heart, so you're going to poison what's inside of you? That very hour, the word was fulfilled. Concerning Nebuchadnezzar, he was driven from men. He ate the grass like oxen. His body... No, his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagles, feathers and his nails like birds and claws. He was turned into a beast. You think if God can use an ass to talk to a prophet, what makes you think he can convert you into a beast? I hope nobody's name in here is Wilbur. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, all the baby boomers know what that means. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> then at the end of time, verse 34, Nebuchadnezzar, I love this. I love this verse, look. He lifted, he said, Nebuchadnezzar lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. Oh. See, there's going to have to be a time, people, where you're going to have to completely surrender back to God and start getting some understanding on who this great God is. Right. Amen? Amen? Don't you know that it's like my wife says, there's blessings, there's blessings, there is blessings right now that are waiting for you, and God wants to release them, but guess who's holding them back? He wants to bless you, but you're not letting him. He says, I came to give you life and to give it to you more what? Oh, Abundantly. So don't you want an abundance from God? Yeah. So why do you hold back what belongs to God? Mm. Well, you guys were shouting and praising God <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I hope you can chew on this meat. Come on. I'm serious, people. It's, why do people find it so hard to give back what belongs to God? No. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because it's your carnal mind. Yeah, that's right. It's your flesh. You're still thinking. It's like my wife says, some of you have holes in your pockets. You go and work 40 and it's gone before 10. <laughs> Come on now. Right. I'm, I'm serious. God wants to bless you so much, people. And, and people are, are, are withholding their own blessings. That's right. Look, I'm only telling you what the Word of God says. The word God says, given, it shall be given. Amen. Press down, shaking over, and ru Amen. running Amen. over in abundance. Amen. Look, I remember. No, I do. I remember. I used to live paycheck to paycheck. Amen. And sometimes I had to go and borrow from Peter. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, people. You got all money. And I'm working 40 hours a week, and I can't make ends meet. But one day, one day I got some understanding. Mm -hmm. One day, the Lord came and spoke to me. And like I told you before, when I was an usher, I used to pick up the tithe, but I never paid the tithe. <laughs> <laughs> but one day the Lord spoke to me. He says, you're picking up the tithe, Brother Bob. <laughs> he says, don't you think that it's time to start paying your tithe? <laughs> I got some understanding. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, people. I have never looked back. Amen. God is blessed. Amen. I'm serious. Amen. Sister Julie and, and brother, Sister Julie came to me and she gave me, I don't want to say it, okay. She gave me my birthday present early. He says, what do I give a man that has everything? I got everything. Look, we're not in lack. I thank God that we're not in life. I thank God that my bills are paid on time. I thank God that my mortgage is paid on time. 
I thank God that the mortgage on this place is paid on time. Amen. We've been good stewards. We give over and above. Amen. And God has blessed us. Yes, amen. Sometimes I got more money in my front pocket than my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> don't you want don't you want that kind of a blessing? Yes. Huh? Yes. That you don't have to live payday to payday? That you can say, oh my God, it's it's payday again? <laughs> and you still got two paychecks in your pocket? <laughs> I like that one. Man, I don't know about oh, you, but I'm it. blessed. And I want to pour this blessing to you guys. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you the word of God works. Because yeah. you know what? I did it his way. Amen. Yeah. I got yeah. some understanding from all this. And he woke me up to my stupidity uh -huh. and to my ignorance. Amen. I'm going to help some people in here. Amen. 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 Because I can't help you. Amen. Amen. Then at the end of time, Nebuchadnezzar lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Look, this is Nebuchadnezzar now. He humbled himself. And he says, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, no one, it says, no one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? You can't begin to question God. If God comes and begins to chastise you, don't question God because maybe you need a spanking. Maybe you need a little bit of time out. Maybe you need to go back into the corner with your face facing the wall. Because see, it comes a time when God is going to pour down his judgment, people. And, and, and you think that he doesn't see and hear what people are doing right now, whether you're saved or not, whether you're in the body of Christ or not, he sees everything. He knows your ways. But Lord, you know the people. That's what, that's, thank you, Father. That's what Aaron told his brother. You know how they were pressing on me and pressing on me. And pre you know their ways. They're carnal and their flesh. They want a party. And Moses was up on top of the mountain waiting on God to receive his ways. And he came down and he saw the people. Wake up, people. He knows your ways. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? No, what have you done? You know, that's a question for all of us. No, what have you done? Are you doing it God's way or are you doing it my way? And at the same time, it says, My reason return to me. Come on, people. Get some reason in your hearts. Get some reason in your mind. Open up your eyes and ears to see and hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen? Amen. And at the same time, it says, my reason return to me. For the glory of my kingdom, it says, my honor and splendor was returned to everything that was lost, people. It was brought back to him. He says, my counselors, my nobles were restored to me. I was, re now it says, I, I was restored to my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added to me. You know what that means, people? They started giving Nebuchadnezzar more honor. You know why? Because he honored the most high God. It flows down like this, people. 
when you begin to honor God the way he's supposed to be honored, guess what's going to happen? People are going to start to honor you. But you got to do it his way. Thank you, Father. I <coughs> my counselors and my nobles were restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, see, this is him now. He's making a proclamation. He says, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, I will praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are true and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, <coughs> he is able to put down. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you people, there, there is so much about doing it his way. You can't go wrong if you do it God's way. You may not see it at the beginning, but if you get on that pathway where he puts you on, you guys, and little by little by little by little, you're going to start seeing God's ways. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're going to see him right before your, your eyes. That's right, that's right. You're going to see that effective door opening up. You're going to see the windows of heaven opening up for you. You're going to see so many things, people, and he's going to start adding more and more and more to you and to your life because now you're doing it his way. Amen? Quit worrying about what's going on out there, your familia and this and that. Let it go. Let it leave them alone, like Jesus said. Amen. You come, pick up your cross, and follow me. Amen. 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 I turn over to the book of Isaiah 55. <clears throat> Are you guys there? In Isaiah 55, starting in verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Amen. And the righteous, the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. You know that God is getting, <coughs> it, it is waiting for backsliders to come That's back. That's right, amen, hallelujah. Yes. No, he's waiting for the backslider to yes. come back to him. Yes. Because, oh Lord Jesus, help us. Look, don't give up on those people that That's said right. yes to the Lord right. one day. Amen. And they walked away There's from hope. God. There's hope. You keep praying for them. Amen. Keep interceding for them, yes. even if you have to fast for them, yes. but don't give up on them, yes. because God hasn't given up on us, yes. and the Word of God says, those who are strong, Ooh, come on stand come on in the gap, because yes. there's an emptiness there in their life. Yes. The enemy has steered them That's in right. the wrong way. That's right. Wake up to this, you guys. There's a lot of people in here that have family members that are going the other way. And you can bring him back into the fold. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. You can't think like God, because if you did, then you would be perfect. And we would have a perfect church. <laughs> For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways are my ways, says the Lord. This is God speaking. Amen? Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. You think that you can outthink God in any way? You think that you're better than God in any way of your life? You think you've got it all together? Because you're doing it your way? It's not about you anymore. Just, like I told you, just get out of the way. Amen. 
Come on, just get out of the way. You know, I remember this. Thank you, Father. And this is so good how God begins to open up your memory. I remember, I, look, I, I remember when the Pope came to, to L.A. And you know when the Pope comes into town, everybody's there. Well, not everybody. <laughs> and I remember this, I, and I heard this story, and I remember people were lining up through the thing there. What do you call this? The aisle. And they wanted a blessing from the Pope. And, and, and the people were going out like this, and finally this one man came to him, and he's looking at the Pope, and the Pope is looking at him. And I don't know what they say, but you know what the man told him? He says, why don't you get out of the way so we can see Jesus? Amen. <laughs> True story. <laughs> you know the Lord just brought that back to me. <laughs> Why don't you get out of the way so we can see Jesus? That's right. Oh my God, people, that that's what I check in my heart. See, because man is always trying to do it their way. Look at, even in the body of Christ, come on, that's not, we can go there. That's true. Speaking the truth in love. That's right. Amen. 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 But see, but when, but when you have a certain agenda, there is no agenda, thank God. We just got to do it His way. Amen. Amen. And when we get to that point, when we get that understanding of who God really is, we're going to be able, people, to stand right here and, 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 you know, it's like this, look, people. We do all have the Holy Spirit in us, right? Yeah. It's in us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I lie to my wife, I'm lying to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. If she lies to me, yeah. she's lying to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So see, do you see how important it is, people, not to be lying? Because we all know what happened to Sapphira. About lying to the who? The apostles. About what? Their giving. <laughs> Take that home with you. <laughs> For my thoughts are not your thoughts. No, your ways are my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, and my thoughts, than your thoughts? And this is what God is saying to us. Amen? For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but the earth, but, but water the earth, and it will bring forth and bud, that it, it may give what? Seed to the what? There it is, people. Come on. You want to hold back your seed? Go ahead. But I want my seed, I want the rain of heaven to start watering my seed so it can grow and grow and grow. Look, it, it, it's not a secret. I'm not ashamed to say this. I wish I was a rich Christian. I really do. I wish I had millions because we could do a million things. It's true. I'm not greedy. We give when we can. We're not going to put the church in a burden. We're not going to put this church up against the wall. Hey, I'll never do that. You guys will never convince me of putting this church in a hole. I've seen one too many pastors do that. And they're not pastoring no more. They don't have a church no more. Because they wanted to do it somebody else's way. And you didn't listen to God and God told you not to. And you said, well, Lord... <laughs> but Lord, come on. <laughs> Amen. Are you guys still with me? Amen. Thank you, Father. Turn over to the book of Hebrews. We're going all over the place here, people. Aren't you enjoying this? Yeah. I know that I am. I don't know about you, but the Lord told me, you're doing a good job, Pastor Mark. <laughs> <laughs> talking with the Word. Talking with the Word. Amen. The book of Hebrews, chapter 
Where am I here? I'm not so lost. So lost in him. Amen. Hebrews 10, 19. Are you guys there? Hebrews 10, 19. He says, Therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, having boldness, it says, to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a what? Living way. Not a dead way, a living way. It's a living way, people. By a new and a living way which he consecrated for us. Oh, come on, people. He consecrated his life, his body, his blood. Everything that Jesus Christ represented, he gave up for us. And we can't do it his way. By a new and a living way which he consecrated for us. Through the veil that is his flesh. Oh, man. I hope you guys would get a revelation of that. And having a high priest over the house of God. He says, let us draw near with a true heart. Come on, you guys. He's looking for people with true hearts. In full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies are being washed with pure water. <coughs> he says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is what? Faithful. faithful. So if you do it his way, he's going to be faithful to you. Come on. Wake up, people. I, I'm telling you, like I told you before, do you really know this, God? No, do you know this God? No, do you really, 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 do you really, really, really know this God? No, do you? If you knew him, then you wouldn't be what? Thank you, babe. You know that every born-again Christian should not be struggling in life? That's right, that's right. We shouldn't be struggling. Like I told you, we shouldn't be living payday to payday. Borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Or looking for some bottles to go and sell. We used to do that when we were young. When we big way up. Man, I tell you what, when I first got married to my wife, you know those big old giant glass bottles that were worth 25 cents? Man, we used to collect those and we were looking for bottles just to buy diapers. Yeah, that's it, man. I'm serious. Thank God I don't have to buy diapers anymore. No Maybe I should buy some diapers. Or maybe some pucheros. Amen. Amen. No, seriously, people, we shouldn't be in that state right now. Every born again Christian full of the Holy Spirit. Walking in faith, trusting God, being obedient to His word should not be struggling. You should. Somewhere down the line, we made a mistake. Guess what? You went your way. He says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, he says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wait. Without what? Wavering. Wavering. One day you're in and the next day you're out. Put your left foot in and your right foot out. <laughs> slide, slide, slide. <laughs> Make sure you don't backslide. <laughs> And let us consider one another, it says. No, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Okay, here comes some more meat. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. You mean you, you only meet here on Sundays? No, we meet here on Wednesday nights too. That's right, amen. And Thursday mornings. 
What if we had church every day? Hallelujah. Because Paul preached every day and, he, and, and hundreds of people were just flocking to him to hear the word of God. But see, we're too busy because you're doing it your way. Well, I, I don't feel good today. Well, I didn't feel good this morning either. But I'm here because I want to do it his way. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So what's your excuse? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. It's a habit for some people. I love being in church. Not because I stand behind the pulpit. It has nothing to do with it. Even before we were pastors in ministry, we were in church when those doors were open. Why? Because we were hungry and we were thirsty for the righteousness of God and I, and I wanted and I wanted more of God and, and because of our faithfulness little by little by little by little he started raising us up little by little by little and look where he's brought us to Amen. this is your faithfulness people the word of God says that he's a rewarder Amen. my reward I don't know about you I can't speak about nobody in this place but me and my wife I thank God for the rewards yeah. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. Man, the rewards are God are good. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. No, exhorting. Come on, quit tearing people down. Can I say something to you guys? We're talking about people, about the people, and about the people. Yeah. Calmance. <laughs> Let it go. Exhort them. Exhort them. Build them up. That's right. What if it was you that was struggling? What if it was you? What if it was you? You. Yeah, you, 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 and you. All of you. All of you in here. And even myself. What if it was you? And someone came along and they just right. crucified you again one more time with stupid, ugly, ignorant words. But did you know who's in church? Do you know who I saw in church this morning? You ain't going to believe it. <laughs> well, it sure ain't raining outside. That's a good one. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see day is approaching people in other words can I say it like this shut your mouth <laughs> shut your mouth no, shut your mouth be, a, be about doing it God's way did Jesus ever come and condemn and convict he came in love do you guys know what love is then live it. Come on, live it. What's so hard about living in love? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know that right there is a teaching I can take off with that. Amen. Oh, I can take off with that, people. Trust me, people. I can take off with that one verse right there. He says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart." So, when do you begin to trust the Lord with all your heart, or half of your heart? Amen. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Thank you, Lord. Don't understand how all this is going to work. Because if you're going to do it your way, guess what? That tells me you're not trusting in God. And the word is saying to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says, and in all your ways. No, and in all your ways. 
acknowledge it. Yeah. Listen to me, people. Acknowledge Him. Yeah. When you get to know, yeah. or when you get to know who this God is, yeah. oh my God. Hey, come on now. God that Nebuchadnezzar exalted <coughs> and praised, and everything was returned back to him over and above. Amen. Because he got to know who this God is. Right. But when you get to know him, when you begin to acknowledge, come on, we know who God is. Oh yeah, yeah, I know who God is, but right now, ahorita no puedo Dios, right now I can't do this Lord. Jeez. Really, so do you know who this God is? Mm. Well Lord, I don't know if I should. Well, Lord, I don't know if I should. Well, if you don't know, then don't do it. Because if you go out there and do something that you're going to regret, 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 woman. Amen. Yeah, I have to wake you up. Sleeping in the back. Uh -oh. I do. You're getting too comfortable. <laughs> Look, I didn't come to give you a comfort message. I came to get you out of your comfort zone. Amen. 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 In all your ways, it says. In all your ways. In all your ways. No, come on, people. Amen. You know what that word "way" means? Huh? It's a course of action. It's up to you what course you're gonna go into. It's what, what direction are you going into or what kind of action are you going to take? Man, it's still quiet. Oh, man, I got time. The service doesn't end till three, huh? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't you want to get to know who this God is in a deeper way? Don't you want to know that every time that you open up this book, he begins to speak to you, you begin to acknowledge his word, and he begins to give you a vision, he begins to give you revelation, to unveil his word to you. Come on, he says, let's sit down together and let us open up your book. Speak to me, Lord. Lord, speak to me. What, what do I do? Man, I'm in this situation here, Lord. Well, let's find out why you got into this situation. Right. Why are you just sitting here? Because that's why you're situation. <laughs> it's you that's sitting, and God is telling you to go, but you want to sit because you haven't seen what? The angels of God before you? Huh? Oh, come on, you guys. Come on now. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. He'll lead you into that place. <coughs> He'll put you on that pathway, yes, people. Yes, yes. Amen? But too many people are just <coughs> pondering of what they see and hear in front of them. They can't even see beyond that because God, see, I'm telling you people, God wants to give us a vision, but there's too many blind people. He wants to open up our eyes, but you can't see. You don't want to see what he wants to show you because you, you can't handle it. The Lord says that he wouldn't give you more than what you can handle. And, 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 ay, 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 Dios mío. Psalm 37 and 5 says this, don't turn there. It says, commit your ways to the Lord. No, commit your way to the Lord. And trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. Amen. No, come in your way. Take that course of action that I'm talking about. Start walking the way God tells you to walk. Don't worry. Don't worry about what, e what everybody else is doing. Because he, God can talk to everybody, but right now he wants to talk to you here Amen. this morning. Because the enemy would love to misdirect your ways. So that you can go another way. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Look, in the book of John 14, we all know that, right? Remember when the disciples came to him? Huh? They were a little bit confused. No, they were a little bit confused <coughs> about everything that was going on. And Jesus heard them. <laughs> Pick it up, people. And Jesus heard them. He says, let not your hearts be troubled, he says. Come on. Mm. Why are you so troubled with all this? Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm talking about your situations right now. Yes. Everybody in here has something. Yes. Everybody's going through something. That's right. And the Lord is telling us, don't let your heart be troubled. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus said this, look, do you believe in God? No, do you believe in God? Yes. Yes. Then believe also in me. Yes. Yes. That's what Jesus says. Yes. For I go to my Father's house, and in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have not told you. And then of all people to come and tell him something, down in Thomas. Yes. Yeah. He says, Lord, he says, well, where are you going that we don't know? <laughs> oh, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Thomas, I am the way. Jesus could have been no more plainer than that, you guys. He says, I am the way. Take my course of action. Follow me. I'm going to direct you into these pathways. And I'm not just talking about every step that you take. I'm talking about your mind and your heart. He says, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am your yeah. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Yeah. Amen. But he told us the first thing he is telling us here. I am the way. Amen. It's either my way or it's the highway. Amen. See, you can't have your cake and eat it too. That's right. It's my way. Jesus said it. He's telling us here this morning. Amen. Get out of his way, people. Do it, Mina. Do it his way. Amen. If you do it his way, you're gonna be okay. Amen. Everything's gonna be fine at the end. At the end of your, at the end of your your journey. Amen. On the day that you breathe your last breath, Amen. you're gonna say, "I did it God's way." Amen. 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 Turn over to the book of Ezekiel. I'm gonna end with. You know that the word says, go to Ezekiel chapter 18. The word says that Moses got to know God's ways. But the acts of the children of Israel decided to go another way. Their way. Ezekiel 18, starting in verse 25. He says, yet you say, the way of the Lord is not fair. <laughs> Here you go, people. Complaining, Complaining otra vez, resongando. <laughs> when are you going to stop? I know. Complaining. <laughs> and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, so listen to me. And we're filled with the Holy Spirit. I know. Amen. And we're complaining sure. about every little issue that rises up? Yet you say the way of the Lord is, is not fair. Oh, hear now, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair? Man, you're trying to compromise with God? God doesn't compromise with man. We try to compromise with each other. And there's people that are doing things behind closed doors. That's not compromising. Amen? 
And he hears the people complaining again. And the way of the Lord is not fair. <laughs> You're not being fair with us, God. You brought us out of the land of Egypt. You dragged us out into this desert. And it's dry. Where's the meat? Where's the beef, Lord? <laughs> no. Where, Lord? Where, where's, where's the beef, Lord? Oh, you want beef? Oh, I'm going to send you some beef. Because after all the... Don't you think that God got tired of their complaining? Yeah. Two million people complaining against the man of God. Yeah. Look, I, I tried everything. I, I, I fasted for you people for 40 days and 40 nights. And I came down. And when I saw that you were partying and you couldn't have enough faith to wait on me to bring you the laws of God? Wow. <clears throat> and we're complaining about everything? Lord, you're not fair. <laughs> And the way of the Lord is not fair. And look at what God is here. Hear now, O house of Israel. Okay. Oh, hear now, O truth and love family ministries. Is that not my way which is fair? And your ways are not fair? He says, look, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness. Talking about backsliders. Amen. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, <coughs> commits iniquity, goes back to his vomit, and he dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. And you know what? It may not be a physical death, but to die spiritually? Oh my God. Do you know why? Because we're all going to die. Amen. But to die spiritually and to let go of the promises of God. He says, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity of which he has done that he dies. Again, it says, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed, and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Amen. He comes back to God just like the prodigal. Amen. Amen. Just like King David when he committed adultery and murder. What did he say? He says, restore to me my salvation Amen. that I may teach others Amen. your ways. Because, it says, because, there's always a cause. <laughs> Verse 28, because he considers and he turns away from all transgressions we committed, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Yeah. What a blessing from God. Yeah. What a promise from God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know how important it is to to stay connected to the vine. Yeah. Right. Yet, it says, the house of Israel says, the way of the <laughs> Lord is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> this is Israel. We could be Israel too. You could probably say and question God, Lord, I, I don't know why I'm going through all this. You're not fair, Lord. You said you were going to bless me. You said you were going to open the windows of heaven. You said that my body wasn't going to be attacked with diseases and germs and virus. You said, Lord, you said, Lord, you're not fair, Lord. <laughs> Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways? which are fair and your ways which are not fair so the next time you fall into something or you go through a struggle think about when it all started 
Because everything has a root. Everything has a beginning. Amen. 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 So when you see, and you got your back up against the wall, and when you see that your husband and your wife are going at it again, find out what happened. Why are you going at it again? Why are you fussing and fighting with each other? Huh? Aren't we supposed to be Christians? Oh, wait a minute. We're supposed to walk in love, huh? No, we're supposed to walk in love. Because love does cover a multitude of sin. Amen? Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair, and your ways which are not fair? And look at what God is saying. Therefore, he says, I will judge you. No, I will judge you. How many fear God? Do you think that God can't judge us now? So don't take grace for granted, people. Grace was given to us as a gift. It's a gift from God that he gave us. The word of God tells us, don't go around insulting the spirit of grace. But why do we do? Why do we do the things that we do? Huh? Like I told you, the Holy Spirit lives in all of us. And we insult one another with certain words. The yelling matches start. The pointing of the fingers start. The strife.